Hey, I'm Dr. James McKinney, and today we will be discussing how to get lasting relief from neuropathy without more drugs, without more surgery. So I just want to thank you for being here. I know your time is valuable, and I want to do my best to educate you on an important topic that affects millions of Americans. Uh, it's something I'm really passionate about, and I know you'll find value from being here. So uh, briefly about me, I'm the founder of Blue Mountain Wellness here in Fredericksburg, Pennsylvania. And 10 years ago, I was primarily focused on chiropractic and natural spinal pain relief. And halfway through my journey, I learned about reversing neuropathy. Um, something was really important to me because my grandfather had neuropathy. And he had neuropathy to the point that he had amputations. Um, they, they ultimately handicapped him. And uh, so I began traveling the country to learn about how to manage this chronic disease. And I became board certified in neuropathy through the American College of Physical Medicine. So today I'm going to talk to you about neuropathy. I'm going to tell you things that you probably have never heard. And uh, so just bear with me as I pull up my, my PowerPoint here, okay? So in, in terms of neuropathy, the, the reality is masking the pain associated with neuropathy through through drugs and, and just dealing with it, it's not the answer. All right. Um, if you or a loved one are, are here because you are experiencing pain in the hands or feet, that could include tingling, numbness, burning, or loss of sensation, you're at the right place. Today, we want to talk about the truth of standard neuropathy treatments and what could be causing your pain. The documented dangers of neuropathy, um, the proven mess, and, and then the proven methods of, of creating lasting relief okay uh, even reversing neuropathy and then i'm gonna give you some simple steps you can take to get to the road of feeling great again um that's the goal that's the plan so stick around and at the end i will have a special gift for you for for being here so back in the 90s and the early 2000s when my grandfather was diagnosed with neuropathy the common treatment was prescription opioids uh, here's a cover from from Time magazine a few years back uh, talking about these these opioids. So back then they would treat neuropathy with with things like oxy oxycotton, Percocets, hydrocodone, etc. Uh, more modern modernly, the trend it's become anti seizure medications like Neurotin, Gabapentin, Cymbalta, Lyrica. But here's the reality: over the last fifty years we've seen an exponential increase in cases of diabetes, heart disease, and neuropathy. Uh, all three of these conditions really go hand in hand. My grandfather, he was no exception. He had all of these, and then he eventually had kidney failure. He had to be on dialysis. So here's some interesting facts for you, all right? Here's a question. How much do we spend in the U.S. on healthcare in a year? Well, let me tell you, it's not $4 million, It's not $4 billion, it's four trillion dollars. Look at all those zeros. Four trillion dollars. Okay. Um 75% of medications that are produced in the world go to the United States. So a country that only makes up five percent of the population consumes 75% of medication. It won't be so bad if our health was was way better than the rest of the country, but listen to this fact. We our number 37 is what we're ranked at. We have the most doctors, the most hospitals. We spend the most money on healthcare, yet we are ranked number 37 globally for the healthiest country. So what is causing this? Well, I'll tell you what's causing it. It's called social conditioning, and it hit a different effect on us as humans. We're inundated with pharmaceutical commercials, and as a result, they spend $4.5 billion a year to condition us that pharmaceuticals are the answer. So since this is about neuropathy, I want you to understand the um, most common thing that, that patients get, gabapentin or neurotin, did you know that that is an anti-seizure medication? What it does, it slows down your brain so you don't feel your feet. It doesn't stop the progression, all right? Lyrica, it's no different. Did your doc tell you that these drugs are not going to stop neuropathy? Let's think about this from a logical perspective. Okay. Here's, here's an analogy. Cause I like to use analogies. If your car has a check engine light, come on, 
do you just put a piece of black electrical tape over it to cover it up? Maybe like a picture, your grandkid. I mean, I suppose you could do that, but wouldn't you want to find out first what's wrong? When I was a teen, I had a truck. I had a 94 Ford Ranger. One day I was a, a mile and a half from my house. And I noticed the temperature gauge light came on. And I said to myself, you're almost home. It's not a big deal. When I finally pulled into the driveway and turned the ignition off, a huge plume of smoke came up from under the hood. Turned out a bad water pump allowed my engine to overheat. And then I blew a head gasket. It's a very costly mistake. And it was all because I ignored what my truck was telling me. So let's think about this from a different perspective. When you have pain or tingling or numbness in your body, you know it's not normal. But for some, it's it's downright painful, and it may be affecting your sleep or your balance or your ability to get around. Does it make sense to just cover up the symptoms, ignore it like a check engine light? Because at the end of the day, that's what all these prescriptions or drugs are doing. Wouldn't it make more sense to get a professional to check this out? Okay, so let's just talk about what is peripheral neuropathy. Neuropathy is damage to or disease affecting the nerves. Peripheral is ref referencing the most distal nerves from the heart. When the heart pumps blood, the toes are the furthest away. And for proper circulation, the blood returning from the feet has to overcome gravity and get all the way back to the lungs that become reoxygenated. See, peripheral neuropathy, it affects 8% of the US population, literally. 24 million people in the United States are suffering from this condition. So while neuropathy at any age, it can occur, it's the most prevalent in adults and it's the most common in diabetics, all right? But just know there's hundreds of types of neuro neuropathic conditions. So, so I get that question a lot, like, doc, I don't have diabetes or my sugar is not high or I'm pre-diabetic, you know, what's causing my neuropathy? I mean, that's not the only cause of neuropathy. It is the most popular. So I'm going to give you seven common warning signs of neuropathy. Again, these are the most common signs. This is not an all-inclusive list. Um, numbness, burning pain, cramping, sharp electrical pain, prickling, tingling, balance uh, problems, balance issues, you know, inability to feel the gas pedal, or you can't sleep because the feet, the, the feet just hurt, or the covers and the sheets on your feet, they just hurt. So while they do the nerves, they do so much to allow your body to function correctly, they act much like wires. So picture a toaster. And when that toaster is plugged in, it's gonna it's gonna work fine. But if that wire is frayed or damaged, it could short out or even cause a fire. And that's kind of how the nerves are. When they're not working properly, they're they're going to do things they're not supposed to do. So, all right, top causes of neuropathy. So I'll let me reiterate this one. Um, diabetics, pre-diabetics. So like I said, diabetics are the most common, but they only account for about 30% of neuropathy cases. Some other common causes include poor circulation, toxic exposures from chemicals, herniated discs in the back of the neck, which is causes stenosis, which is which is narrowing and pressure on the nerves, um, post-surgical issues, autoimmune diseases, infections, alcohol abuse, liver, kidney, or even thyroid conditions. And then lastly on that list, uh, medications, pharmaceutical drugs, okay? When we're dealing with neuropathy, the root of the issue lies at the nerve level. There are different types of nerve fibers and they perceive different things. Some people may feel absolutely nothing and others may have numbness. Others may have burning, stabbing, tingling. So this is a chart and it shows the different types of fibers that we evaluate during an exam. It's important to remember the nerves do a lot more than just give pain signals that refer back to the brain. They're responsible for proprioception, the nerves that innervate the muscle spindles and the gold, Golgi tendon organs, those are your reflexes. And if you're unable to feel changes in the ground because those nerves are damaged, it can lead to falls and that has enough risks of its own. So if the small nerve fibers are impaired and you're unable to detect sharp objects with a bare foot, just a small cuff can fester in a gangrene and it can lead to amputation. Did you know that each year there's more than 86,000 diabetic amputations? 
When my grandfather had his first toe amputated, it took away his ability to go hunting. Um, because of the amputation, he had a lack of balance and he just did not have the courage and, and, and the confidence to be in the woods. He was afraid if he fell, he'd never get back up. You know, and, and, and just knowing what I know now, it's, it's infuriating because I know that I could have positively impacted my grandfather's last 10 years. So here's the deal. Many of you here today have already been told, just deal with it. Nothing can be done. Because that's what the neurologists are going to say. Take your medication or deal with it. So I'm here to tell you that if you continue to do nothing or you keep masking the symptoms with prescription drugs, nothing is going to change for the better. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So here's a quote from the National Institute of Health. Peripheral nerves have the ability to regenerate as long as the underlying nerve cell has not been killed. All right. So it can, this, this can be regenerated. So as I promised, I would cover methods of creating lasting relief or even reversing neuropathy and simple steps you can take to get on the road of feeling great. Okay. So picture your nerves like a plant. Plant needs a couple of things. It needs sunshine, it needs water, nutrients, all those things, and it's going to blossom. But without that, that plant's going to start to wilt and it's going to die. Okay. So take a, take a wilted plant, for example. And if you're able to get that plant, those things before it's too far gone, you can bring it back to life. It's not a death sentence for the plant. Well, peripheral nerves, it's, it's similar, right? So it's important to get the nerves, especially the, the myelin sheath that wraps around the nerves, proper blood flow, because blood is the life bread for nutrients and oxygen. That, that is what blood takes. It takes oxygen and nutrients and it gets it into the periphery, all right? So that's that's step one, rejuvenate, the, increase the blood flow. Step two is to stimulate the nerves. The nerves connect from the periphery through the gut back to the brain. When the nerves are damaged, it's like short-circuiting a wire, just like that toaster analogy. The stimulation is important to restore the connection through a process called neuroplasticity, all right? And step three is activate nerves through therapy. So just much like when an arm is broken or a knee is injured, in order to rehab that body part, you got to undergo therapy. For the nerves, the therapy is brain-based, which is much different than going to a gym. And then the final step is to decrease inflammation. So back to that plant analogy. So let's just say you give that plant the proper nutrients and the fuel to survive, right? So it's getting water, it's getting sunlight, it's getting, you know, some miracle grow, right? Well, if the soil is in too acidic or alkaline of, of an environment, if the soil is too acidic, right? It's, it's not going to matter how much sunlight it gets or nutrients. It's just not going to thrive. Well, much like the body, the body needs to be in an anti-inflammatory state in order to thrive. All right. So those are the four uh, key steps to optimizing your recovery. And every patient has their own individual unique needs, all right? So we all have different goals and different solutions to help achieve those goals, all right? But just imagine, let's just imagine that your nerves are working better and you're able to sleep through the night peacefully or you walk with confidence, feeling steady, being able to enjoy family addings, adding 10 years to your life. How would that make you feel? So here's what I want to offer to you, all right? For the action takers, I have some spots blocked off of my schedule. You'll be able to click them right here. Um, if you reserve a time to see me, I will do a multi-point advanced neuroqualifying assessment. My exams are typically anywhere from $49 to $249, but I have a special offer for you today. If you reserve a spot on my calendar, I'm going to do a complimentary screening. Listen, you might be wondering why I'm doing that, and it's because as much as I value your time, I value mine too. With neuropathy conditions, I'm not able to help all patients. So thanks to technology and doing a webinar like this, I'm able to reach more people and we're able to help to qualify and pre-qualify patients that are good candidates. So if you come into my office after watching this webinar and you say, Dr. McKinney, this is me. I want to do something. I want to make a change. I'm ready for a change. I want to get better. I will do a complimentary exam, come into my office, we'll do a screening and I will let you know how we can help if you are a candidate for my care. And we'll go over that in detail.
Okay. I'll create a customized plan using the four key principles highlighted to help you optimize your recovery, help you regain control of your life. So I'm going to, I'm going to end this webinar with, with the video. And I just want you to think about the next 10 years of your life, what that's going to look like. And you can make the decision. Um, and if you have somebody that, that might qualify for this, share the webinar, let them see this. And I really look forward to helping you out. What will your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease? It's time to decide.